Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Wednesday, July 5th. Customers of Tesla's electric services in Texas are cashing in during the summer heat wave. Some are reporting making as much as $150 a day. With the combination of solar capacity and Tesla's Powerwall, they can join Tesla's electric company's virtual power plant and serve the local grid, but also the owners get extra money when the grid purchases extra power during high usage events and seasons. Tesla is essentially becoming an energy retailer. Tesla now has over 6 megawatts of power capacity signed up for the pilot program, and while it might not sound like much, it can be sometimes making the difference between brownouts or regular electricity in the Texan market. Tesla has broken the Iceland annual sales record for a single car with the Model Y. The record was previously set in 1988 with the Toyota Corolla selling 1,200 units that year. But now the record has been beaten by the Tesla Model Y in 2023, delivering 1,316 units. Now for those of you who have a calendar handy, the year 2023 is far from over. The country has strong incentives to go electric, especially for fleet customers, and with Tesla leading the charge in efficiency, it's a popular choice for companies and consumers alike. Tesla is going on a hiring spree for drivers with the goal of capturing high-quality data that will contribute to the improvement of vehicle performance. Now, when it comes to autopilot and self-driving, people often say that Tesla's own paying customers are the testers, and while that's mostly true, Tesla also does have plenty of internal testing. And increasingly, Tesla has been relying on internal data. But now the automaker is going on a hiring spree for dozens of seasonal vehicle operators, as they call it, for a few months. According to Glassdoor, Tesla pays between $20 and $29 an hour. The positions are spread across 14 United States and two Canadian states, or prefectures, or fiefdoms. I don't really know what Canada uses for their things. Tesla has changed the standard paint color for the Model 3 and Model Y. Now, everything except for Midnight Silver is at least $1,000. Tesla once offered many colors, but has since focused on efficiency and pared down options. For years, Tesla only offered one standard color, which was once black, and then it changed to white. And now here we are with gray. We expect a few years of gray, and then perhaps cycling back to black or white for some time. For the Tesla Model X and S, Tesla appears to be keeping white as the standard color for now. At a recent general meeting, Toyota shareholders raised concerns over Tesla's lead in the electric vehicle industry. After shareholders raised these concerns, several Toyota leaders were quick to point out Toyota's hybrid approach, including hybrid and fuel cell vehicles, a strategy that has already set them back behind industry competitors. President of Toyota's battery electric vehicle factory explained to the shareholders, quote, I love BEVs. Through BEVs, I want to change the future of cars, monozukuri, and work. Now, while their assertions may have helped the automaker skate through their own general meeting, Toyota does have announced plans for electric vehicle production. Toyota aims to sell 1.5 million electric vehicles collectively by 2026, with 10 new electric models, including luxury, small car, and commercial. Now, given that Tesla is already on their way to delivering 1.5 million cars annually, Toyota definitely has some ground to cover after their 2026 goal is realized. Let's hope that Toyota has an ace in the hole to remain competitive as their current EV offering is less than stellar. Live Surface, a high-quality design visualization Mac app, is launching a free mock-up of BYO designs applied to the Cybertruck. As a free promotion, Live Surface is providing Electric readers with access to the Cybertruck mock-up free of charge for the next month, providing an excellent opportunity for individuals and fleet managers to craft something truly unique with an unconventional design vehicle. Wraps have become a hot topic amongst anticipated owners of the Cybertruck, as the steel exterior cannot be painted. Even if you don't plan on ordering a Cybertruck, the Live Surface tool is a great way to mock up your own logo or design on what is likely to become the most talked about vehicle of the decade. Maybe two decades. The Chevy Bolt EV and EUV continue to carry the weight for General Motors EV sales. However, year-over-year -year numbers are down for the first quarter. 
General Motors sold 15,652 EVs in the second quarter of 23, with the Bolt program representing 13,959, or 89%. Although Bolt sales are up 101% from last year, they're actually down from the first quarter. In the first three months of the year, GM sold 19,700 units, up from 358 in the first quarter of 22. Now, the year-over-year comparison is not exactly fair because the Bolt was recalled, but in any respect, General Motors needs to have an ace in their sleeve to replace all those Bolt sales after announcing an end to Bolt production. General Motors has touted the Equinox EV. However, the higher starting price and the larger size leads some to speculate it won't be enough. Stellantis unveiled its latest electric SUV, the Fiat 600e. With up to 400 kilometers of range, starting at a price of 36,490 euros. The new compact electric SUV is set to compete against the upcoming Volvo EX30. The Fiat 600e is based on Stellantis's second generation eCMP platform, sharing several components with the Jeep Avenger. The new vehicle is a five door with enough room for five passengers and ample storage space in the interior. Although the 600E is based on the older model, it features modern upgrades like a sleek front and back end, LED front lights, and a chrome signature 600 badge. With families in mind, the new Stellantis features 15 liters of storage compartment volume and 360 liters in the trunk, which actually tops the Volvo EX30 with 318 for the Volvo. Stellantis, the parent company behind Jeep and Ram, revealed its new global EV platform. The STLA Medium is the first of four platforms from the company designed to power electric cars, crossovers, and SUVs. The new platform features up to 310 miles of range as standard that can be scaled up to 435. Now, the platform is based on a 400 volt electric architecture that can charge from 20 to 80 percent in 27 minutes. Vehicles powered by this platform will be offered in front-wheel and all-wheel drive, with power output ranging from 160 kilowatts to 285. In the U.S., Stellantis' first electric pickup under the Ram brand, which is the 2025 Ram 1500 REV, is due out, and it is expected to ride on this STLA platform. Meanwhile, Jeep is due to release their first EV in the U.S., including the Recon and Wagoneer S. Volvo saw a massive spike in electric sales this past month, as EV sales more than quadrupled year over year, signaling no shortage for demand. Volvo's EV sales totaled 9,535 in June, compared to only 2,138 units in the same time last year. Looking at just electric, Volvo's fully electric car sales more than doubled on the back of only two models, the XC40 and the C40. Volvo also released what could be its most significant model yet just last month. After several months of teasing, they finally unveiled the EX30 with a starting price of around $35,000. This model is expected to be a big hit as early impressions are quite positive. In today's community comment found on YouTube, I got an overwhelming response to my question of what device all of you are watching or listening to the show on. Thank you very much for that. Of course, it drives up engagement, but it also gives me a good barometer of which to calibrate the audio and visual presentation so that I know exactly what you guys are looking for or looking at, looking through. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.